What's going on there guys? Good afternoon. It is the Earth Master here on this uh, Tuesday. I believe it's Tuesday, right? Or is it Wednesday? I can't remember which day it is here. Uh, Tuesday, that's right. January 11th, 2022. About uh, 12.03 p.m. Uh, California time, West Coast. A lot of movement kicking up here overnight into the Aleutian Trench where they seen that 6.8 earthquake. Uh, that was subsequently followed up by a... Uh, Looks like they keep downgrading it. There was a 6.7, 6.6 uh, level for uh, a pretty large aftershock there as well. Let's go ahead and jump into the other map. Take a look at the uh, earthquake activity that is kicked up overnight uh, right around the Fox, Fox Islands there along the Aleutian Trench. This area right here is the uh, subduction zone, the uh, North American Pacific Plate subduction zone here. Of course, the Aleutian Trench runs a pretty considerable distance here from about the Gulf of Alaska area, or at least right around here, to the uh, this little bend where we get another subduction zone. This area sees a lot of uh, accumulated stress in a year period and has seen some uh, quite a bit of a large earthquake activity throughout time, including a nine-pointer up there uh, in this area of the map. But let's go ahead and look at the movement here over the last 24 hours. Uh, within this region it's been relatively quiet up there uh, on the maps but uh, that quickly changed uh, earlier this morning when we seen the 6.8 strike in the subduction zone at 22.3 kilometers of course quite a few aftershocks continued there for a little while including a 6.6 uh, this earthquake was uh, pretty strong not a super mega quake but it is in an area that does see some uh, pretty damaging quakes uh, a little bit of a a few folks did report feeling it. Luckily, this was in an unpopulated area, or at least highly unpopulated. Fault plane solution shows dipping on the subduction zone interface. The uh, little bit of tectonic summary here from the USGS states that uh, the earthquake occurred as a result of thrust faulting, which is a subduction zone, uh, as the Pacific Plate subducts beneath the North American Plate at the Aleutian Trench. The subduction zone extending to the southwest from Alaska. Uh, at the location of the event, the Pacific Plate converges with the North America at a velocity of about 70 mm a year in a northwest direction, subducting at the Aleutian Trench south of the January 11th earthquake. Uh, there's the uh, focal mechanism suggestions uh, slip on either a shallow, shallow, shallowly dipping or steeply dipping fault trending west-southwest uh, to east-northeast slip is likely to have occurred on the shallow dipping fault uh, consistent with an interface subduction event right subduction zone earthquake uh, sometimes they get pretty big this is kind of a minor one uh, while commonly plotted as points on map let's see here uh, the 6.8 earthquake was followed one hour later by an m6.6 .6. historically the section of the Aleutian arc in the vicinity of this earthquake uh, has hosted seven events of m6.5 within uh, about 100 kilometers since the early 1980s. A much larger 7.8 earthquake occurred in the vicinity in uh, 1965, it looks like. A uh, large segment of the shallow subduction zone west, just west of this area, um, occurred, uh, what was it, a ruptured in the M8.6 level. Well, a pretty large earthquake back in 1957. Uh, which spawned a large and damaging tsunami locally and also impacted the shores of Hawaii and California. Uh, I did kind of pull up this map here. Uh, see where it went to. Here we go. Of uh, 7.0. I pulled out 7.0 and above since uh, at least records been kept here um, from the USGS. And the epicenter of the earthquake activity today uh, was right around the Fox Islands area, just right in the vicinity of this one right around where the 7.8 struck in 1965 uh, also up a little bit further upstream we had that 7.0 1902 if you're looking around the area there's definitely been uh, quite a bit of sevens and uh, whatnot over time most of these older earthquakes uh, i'm talking about uh, early 1900 so uh, with the 70 mm accumulated stress built up over time very possible um, you know that we may have enough energy at least on uh, certain parts of the solution or enough accumulated stress here over time uh, to possibly see something in the terms of an 8.0 or greater in this region again 
A 6.8 is really nothing compared to what this area is uh, very capable of producing. Of course, last year we had that, uh, I think it was the 8.1 strike over here in this region of the Aleutian Trench. So with the uh, general movement, I believe that probably accumulated a lot more stress in a shorter amount of time here in this region uh, due to that uh, northwest uh, kind of movement here with the Pacific Plate and the subduction area here. So uh, definitely something to watch pretty closely as, uh, well, aftershock activity is uh, continuing pretty uh, dramatically. Looking at the total list so far, at least here within this little area, this does not include... Uh, I don't think these guys are showing anything ab um, below 4.0. Looks like uh, there's a 3.9, but that's way over here. But there's got to be way more than the uh, earthquake activity up here on the map. But uh, quite a few fours and some upper fives in there, including that 6.6 .6 aftershock. Uh, so something to watch, right? Uh, especially within the next 24 hours or so. Very uh, sensitive time when it comes to possibly producing... Uh, a mega quake within this zone. Sometimes these can be four shocks. We just don't know 100% completely if they are. You know, so um, just putting that food for thought out there that we need to pay attention to this region here now that we got some significant movement happening uh, in a major player in producing some mega quakes. So be on guard around the Aleutian Trench, Alaska area. Uh, we get a, a mid eight pointer, upper eight pointer here. We're looking at. Uh, uh, tsunamis being produced out there depending on the uh, exact um, um, exact type of earthquake that you know along the Aleutian Trench like uh, of course it's a subduction zone but uh, man I had some Taco Bell this morning that's probably not the best thing huh so just be on guard folks um, stay alert the West Coast has gone awfully quiet uh, again Kind of odd, but then again, um, I do think uh, areas to the west over here along the Japan area and uh, we get some larger quakes up here tend to release a little bit of the stress here along the west coast. Let's look at the all magnitudes here and uh, you can see there's not a whole lot of movement kicking up here in, in uh, California right now. A little bit of activity, older earthquake activity from yesterday uh, up around the Nevada area, some movement and the Ridgecrest region. I've been seeing a little swarm in the uh, Los Angeles area, around Torrance and Carson area. Concrete jungle here on this map. Uh, looks like the largest so far is a 2.7 in that cluster of earthquakes. Uh, getting some bouncing around, or 2.8, excuse me, uh, down here. Getting some bouncing around of the, uh, the depths of these earthquakes here. They're all over the place, and that could be a bad sign when it comes to... Uh, possibly triggering one of these fault systems here in the Los Angeles area. Of course, there's quite a few, uh, uh, some some faults that run through there, right, in the highly populated zones here of uh, Los Angeles. So uh, don't want to trigger one of those things or else we could be looking at some damage out there in that region. But uh, kind of watching that area. We haven't seen too much movement uh, in the Southern California area following that activity last night, but uh, still keeping an eye on the West Coast region. Uh, areas to the west here, a little bit of activity kicking up following all that movement um, along the Aleutian Trench. You can see some other earthquakes here kind of popping off here uh, to the west and northwest. That would be consistent with the uh, general movement here and the, I guess, the pressure, if you will, in this region. So i uh, got to be on guard in this area uh, for, like I said, possible large-scale movement. Eight pointer that we had was uh, right about in here, so there's considerable distance. That's a major subduction zone here, pretty lengthy as well, similar to the uh, a little bit different setup, but uh, very similar in length to the uh, Peru Chile Trench down there, which looks uh, yeah, looks a little quiet right now. I'm going to pull up the uh, image map here, or an image that I have. Let me see if I can bring this up. Of uh, this kind of like a little diagram of the uh, Aleutian Trench here shows accumulated stress in the uh, different sections of the Aleutian Trench here. It looks like to the east, uh, a little bit on the lesser side of accumulated stress, but the further west you go along the uh, trench, uh, things get a little bit more accumulated due to the, uh, well, the general motion of the plate, like I said once again. You can see on the outlines there, a couple M8ers, eight, mid-8s, 
upper eights, if you will, 1965 M8.7 there along the uh, uh, western part. And also uh, looks like uh, that 1957 earthquake that produced the uh, damaging tsunami in Hawaii and California, uh, 1957 there. And also a little bit further, this ma I don't this map does not show the eight pointer uh, that struck earlier today, but it's roughly right around the 8.3 um, marking there that struck around the 1938s, uh, 1938 year along that subduction zone. So it doesn't take a massive amount, like hundreds of years, to accumulate, uh, you know, significant amount of stress. So it's been a little time since we've seen, um, you know, a, a pretty large, large quake. I'm talking above the eight pointer that we've seen earlier last year uh, along the Aleutian Trench. So we uh, definitely will be watching this pretty darn closely. I did pull up a seismograph station in the uh, uh, Alaska area that is on the uh, live stream so we will keep uh, keep an eye on that pretty closely uh, let's see what else we got here folks a little distraction uh, Hawaii not a whole lot of movement going on here southeast flank was looking uh, a little active that has since calmed down uh, Kilauea volcano crater area still showing massive amounts of movement following the uh, re-uptick of the eruption there a couple nights ago. Uh, most of it confined to the uh, Kilauea crater at the moment when it comes to the seismic activity. Mona, uh, Mona Loa up here showing a little, little bit of activity, spotty movement, but overall things kind of just calming down following uh, all that activity there along the Aleutian Trench. Still awfully quiet here in this area. Um, starting to think maybe, if anything, with the adjustment of this plate now, uh, if anything, this I think this whole area should be under a watch here uh, due to the, uh, well, we, we watched this for quite a while. No, no activity, very quiet movement when it comes to uh, the uh, release of accumulated stress here, you know, in, in the uh, Japan Trench and northward through the, through the uh, Kuro Kamachaka Trench. We just haven't seen that large scale movement like we're looking for. Uh, so think of anything now we're getting a little bit of further pressure here within this region in that direction and uh, just good to be on guard in this area right here looking uh, looking a little on the sketchy side when it comes to the uh, potential uh, for a large earthquake we'll see what happens I'm talking above eight uh, Fiji here looking at a little bit of movement some deeper activity as well down here around the Fiji Islands area 4.9 got uh, 548 kilometers two point uh, yeah, 548 kilometers for that earthquake. And also two other uh, earthquakes along the Tonga Trench, pretty shallow movement. The New Zealand swarm has magically disappeared. We're looking at a swarm of activity here uh, yesterday and the day before that has since completely died off. A little bit of, uh, a little bit of adjustment on a certain section of a plate will definitely have uh, a, a, another reaction, adverse reaction on a... Uh, on the same plate or or nearby plate so and that's kind of what we're seeing here looks like uh temporarily we'll see how long that lasts uh south america has remained quiet uh only a couple of small earthquakes i'm sure you guys can hear that wonderful train it it's, uh, it's a lovely sound let me tell you a little sarcasm there uh south sandwich islands did see a little bit of activity overnight uh, a couple of fours kicking up way down south and uh this activity here from uh, yesterday, 6.6 .6 in Cyprus and also North Atlantic or Northern Mid Atlantic Ridge, uh, 6.0. That was uh, from yesterday as well. Uh, Haiti did pick up on a couple earthquakes last night prior to the uh, movement there along the Aleutian Trench. Had a couple fours kicking off here uh, in this area and also some activity around the Puerto Rico Trench. This region has seen. Um, pretty much quiet conditions following the activity in Alaska as well so uh, kind of a kind of just a, a little watching a little waiting period at the moment to see what's going to happen here uh, see if we get any further uh, build up of pressure here like I think we're getting uh, within this region right now uh, so let's see what else we got I uh, want to show you guys the Yellowstone map here real quick it's always cool to check out the larger earthquakes uh, when they pop up on local stations and you can, or local seismograph stations, and you can see uh, 
well pretty significantly that they did and uh, let's see if we can get this to load up hello hello kind of a little on the slow side that's kind of odd okay so there's the uh, 6.8 some other small aftershocks in there and another uh, six pointer there 6.6 .6, they said looks pretty uh, looks about the same but uh, looks like some other ones there pretty close to six as well looks like two of them those are distant earthquakes from the Aleutian Islands uh, but if you notice this all this earthquake activity has kind of triggered a, uh, a swarm if you will within the last couple hours at uh, Yellowstone National Park so these somewhat localized earthquakes excuse me within the area let me look at this uh, other map here and see what we got uh, in the Yellowstone area not for sure what happened here it looks like the earthquake triggered a uh, uh, sensitivity adjustment error on the uh, seismograph so hopefully those folks will get to that uh, soon uh, looking at uh, looks like that may have triggered at least a couple seismographs to go into some type of weird uh, defaulted error mode you can see that on some of those stations unless let's see what this is here there's some of the s waves kicking up but they didn't pick up the uh this did not pick up the um main quakes here kind of odd but that's weird that signet signature that we're seeing is kind of showing up here on this station as well i'm not for sure if there's a major wind event up there or not and uh, coincidentally it just happened to pick up about the same time as the uh, 6.8 and uh, the other Aleutian Islands earthquake uh, happened uh, it's possible I'll have to look at the weather conditions here uh, a little bit later but definitely uh, hmm showing up on that station there as well the rest of the park looks pretty quiet I don't see any other earthquake activity but given this here looking at this activity some of it is earthquake activity or possibly ice quakes uh, but we'll have to get back in that a little bit later and uh, check that out all right folks just hang tight sit tight uh, definitely a lot of stuff going on a um, lot, whole lot of movement going on out there along the plates I say this Pacific plates pretty massive here uh, as well as the North American plate and we, when you get these two uh, uh, intermingling with each other and creating these quakes uh, just kind of you know kind of makes you wonder what's going to happen over here along these quiet areas that have been quiet for some time uh, just don't forget the accumulated stress uh, indexes here they get a little bit more amplified as you head west here in this region due to the general plate movement so uh, just be on guard folks we will be back a little bit later on uh, this evening uh, live stream is up and running somehow it magically went down not for sure what happened just weird it went down about the time the uh the uh earthquake struck up there in the aleutian islands it was just eerie uh not my computer my computer didn't reset on this side my internet was still good uh green across the board everything still showed it running so um i didn't even notice the stream being down uh until i went to do my update video on the uh earthquake this morning in the aleutian trench area and uh uh, I don't know what happened. It's just it's odd. It's some weird times going on. Let me tell you, folks. All right, keep an eye on things, folks. We got uh, quite a bit of movement kicking up here, so we'll be back a little bit later on this evening with a complete update video. Unless something drastic happens here, uh, we'll chat you guys a little bit later. I do have the. Uh, let's see here. We got a little bit of movement down in the uh, Barrett area of Southern California, but I did bring up a uh, Kodiak. Uh, Island Alaska station to kind of monitor the activity there along the Aleutian Trench uh, so that's the station to watch there in Alaska a little bit of localized activity in the uh, Southern California area right now so all right guys have a good day stay safe out there we'll chat you a little bit later on